Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. In this video, let's look at how to set up a mock API using JSON server. The JSON server helps us to get a full REST API with zero coding in less than 30 seconds. When developing front-end applications, having a fake API helps us speed up the development. You don't have to wait for the fully functional backend API to be available to start your front-end development. Let's look at how we can quickly set up a fake API. Let's head to the command prompt and create a new folder for our mock API. Let's initialize this with yarn in it with minus y so that it takes all the defaults. We can now add JSON server as a dependency here with yarn add JSON server. Let's open this up in Visual Studio Code so that we can start adding the mock API file. Let's add a new file that's db.json to serve up data. I have a list of quotes available here, which I will paste into it. Let's go ahead and wrap this as an object and name the property as quotes. Now we have a JSON object with quotes property, which is a list of quotes. Let's go to package.json and add a script in order to start the JSON server. This tells JSON server to start the server looking at db.json as a source of data. Let's head back to the console and run the task that we just created. The JSON server is started and it's looking at HTTP localhost 3000. That's the default port it uses. Let's hit localhost 3000. You have the default JSON server page. You can see there is an available resource slash quotes. Once you go into there, you get the JSON that we had. To get a specific code, let's say slash one, and then that retrieves the quote by the ID one. But not always can we use something like this straight out of the box. We might have to customize the data or format it in a different way, have a specific route or various other things that comes up in the project. Let us see how we can customize JSON server so that we can incorporate all these changes. Let's head back to Visual Studio Code and add a server.js file. Our mock data is going to have the structure of the API, which means the types needs to be exactly same as what our API exposes. It'll be good if we can use the power of TypeScript here to get type checking for our mock data. Let's add TypeScript as a dependency here. Yarn add TypeScript and also the types for JSON server, which is at slash types JSON server. With those two added, we can rename the server.js file, which we just created as server.ts file, which stands for TypeScript. Now we need to tell the TypeScript its configuration here. So let's add in a tsconfig.json file, which will have the TypeScript configuration. I have a default configuration already available. So let me paste that in here and save that. The JSON server side has the boilerplate code required to wire up the JSON server. So let's copy this and put this into our server.js file. Let's convert the requires into import and exports. With that done, you can see it's creating a JSON server, setting up the db.json, setting up the default middlewares and starting the server on 3000. Let's now update this task to use the server.js instead of the default JSON server implementation. Since that's in TypeScript, I'll use TS node, which we've already added in as a dependency using TypeScript and say TS node and open up server.ts file. Let's go back and run the task that we just created. JSON server is again running. Let's go to the local host 3000 and make sure everything is working fine as before. This is exactly the same behavior that we had before. Right now, the data is coming from a JSON file and we don't have any type safety on that. So we'll go to the db.json file. Since this is serving up quotes, let me rename that into quotes.ts file. So now we have a TypeScript file, which is serving us the data that's required. Let's make that into an object quotes, which is an array of quotes and export that by default. However, this is still not giving us any type safety. In your project, if you have a Swagger file, which defines the API spec, then you could use that to generate the types. If not, you can manually handcraft the types from your API endpoints. If you're having a Swagger spec like I do, let's open up a tool called nSwag, 
which allows you to create TypeScript definitions from Swagger specifications. Here, you can choose a TypeScript client and paste in the Swagger specification or give a URL to that. I have this on my local as a file, so let me paste that in. This is just a Swagger spec for an app that I have been building for this. If I go to the TypeScript client options, we can create a DTO type, specify it as interface, and various other options that you can choose from. Let's say generate outputs, which will open up the output tab with the specifications. There's a code DTO, a customer, and different statuses and types available from this API. Let me copy all that and put this into a file API model.ts. So we have a quote summary DTO and a quotes DTO which we need to start serving up on the endpoint. We need to serve the quote DTO from here. So I'll paste some of the data which matches that structure. You can see now I have an object quotes which is of type quote DTO that is imported from the API model TS and this exposes an array of objects. So let's go into the server.ts and get that data. We have it in the quotes.ts file and we get the quotes here. In the router, instead of passing in the db.json file, which no longer exists, let's pass the quotes object. The router can serve up either a file or an in-memory object. Let's make sure this is passed in as an object and try restarting the server again. JSON server is again running. Let's go to the browser and refresh this and make sure it's all up and running like before. You can see this is starting to give us a more detailed quote DTO. And if I go to slash one, I can get a particular quote details. If you have more than one resources to serve, you might need to start arranging this a bit more differently. Let's go and add in a mock data folder, which will host all the data files. Let's move in the quote.ts inside there. Let's say you have a new type called users, which is going to be a list of users. So let's add this up in an index.txt file. Let's go and add some users, which is of type user profile DTO, and add in some data for that. So we have two users now coming up. Let's go to the index.tx and expose a list of mock data. So that's going to be a mock data object and get the users and the quotes. Let's import both users and quotes and serve this up as a mock data object. So let's go back to server.ts. Instead of importing from mock data slash quotes, let's get it from the index.ts, which has the full object and rename that as mock data. Since that's already an object that's exported from there, we no longer need to make this as an object. We can just pass it as such. Let's go to the server and restart this again. Let's go to localhost 3000 and refresh it. And you can see it's exposing users and quotes as an endpoint. If I go to users, I'll get both the users. Slash one gives me one of the user. And if I was to use the quotes endpoint, I'll still get the full quotes data. So we have multiple data coming up and there's also type safety. If the API for some reason changes this to let's say picture URL, and you would have updated this using nswag or whatever method you're using to create your types. The moment you update that, you're going to get type safety, which says update this property and that no longer exists. The same goes for if there's any data getting added or removed. So let's make that as picture URL and everything is back fine. Normally we have a list view and a detail view. The list view might have a different format for the data. It might combine some attributes of the detail views and put that as one field as a calculated option. So we might need to convert that in our endpoints as well. So for example, the quotes one gives us a more detailed view of the quote. However, for the quotes list, we wanted a summary view. We don't want the full customer details. Maybe we just want the customer name alone. So the structure of the data might be different. If I go to the API model, I have a quote summary DTO, which exactly represents what the structure of the summary of the list page needs to be. So let's see how we can update this so that 
when we hit the quotes endpoint without an identifier, we get this summary. So let's go to server.ts file again and start modifying something here. We need to modify the router.render method, which is currently not available as part of the types. Let's add in a ts ignore for now so that it doesn't show the error. Let's get the URL that's for this particular request, the request.original URL. If the URL is equal to slash api slash quotes the request dot method is equal to get we need to transform the data so let's get the data that's part of this response that's available as res dot locals dot data and we'll need to now transform this let's have a function here which can transform a quote into a quote summary so let's use this mapping in here to convert this data into the summary form so let's use data dot map and pass in the quote summary so this data is going to be a list of quotes which is now going to be mapped as a quote summary now to set this back onto the response let's use and specify the mapped data the endpoint is going to be slash quotes so let's go back to the server and start that again refresh this and hit the quotes endpoint and you can now see this is a summary view if i go into slash one you can get the detailed view looks like i need to handle the else case as well and set the json p as the if i move this up and say else rest.json p of data and restart the server again and try refreshing this yeah and the start data starts coming up so when you hit the slash quotes endpoint you'll get the summary view and when you hit a slash one the specific you'll get the detail view Note here that if you have a trailing slash in the end, this doesn't match the pattern we have written, which is why it's returning the detailed view in this case. So you might need to go and update your checks here so that it matches the trailing slash as well. One common thing with most of the APIs that I've worked with is that it's behind a slash API URL. By default, JSON server has everything at the slash endpoint of the localhost server. So if you want to add it behind a slash API endpoint, we need to update the routes. You can update the routes using the JSON server dot rewriter. So let's go in and add in a middleware, rewrite all the APIs slash APIs to be at slash dollar one. So anything that comes after slash API is going to be redirected to the slash, which is the default routes for JSON server. We need to make sure that this route is now mapped to slash API and start this. So now if you are to hit slash quotes, you will still get that, which is the default, but you'll also start getting the data from slash API slash quotes. Let's remove the trailing slash to get the summary view and slash one to get the detailed view. Now we have a fully functional fake API serving us data from our object. So anytime you change your types, you'll be forced to change the object data. And also you can write such customizations here to transform the data into different formats that you require. Hope this helps you to set up a JSON server using TypeScript. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like to be notified of future such videos, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.